Yes, one might say they have a keyboard problem, but should one? So today we're checking out the Wooding One. It's my first analog keyboard. I'm super excited to see how it plays out because it's very unconventional. And so you may be wondering what is an analog keyboard? Well, different pressure sensitivities on the key relate to various increments of movement. So a light press would mean very slow motion in game versus a complete press meaning full speed like on the regular keyboard. Now you can compare them to the analog sticks on the Xbox controller or the PlayStation controller where the lateral movement on the analog sticks gives you that different intensity of motion Whereas on an analog keyboard, pressing down delivers that same uh, effect of intensities of motion in game. And so this is where the Wooding One analog keyboard comes in. They raised over 450% on their Kickstarter project, which really shows that uh, keyboard enthusiasts who are willing to pay the price, which, you know, it's an expensive package for either the basic or the more premium package. It's in the market and people want it. So let's check it out right after this. Wow, is this yours? It sure is. But how? Hugh, 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 Hugh. It pays off to stay loyal. NZXT Hue Plus, now available in black or white, lighting up my Air RGB fans to complement the Kraken cooler all inside the beautiful Manta ITX. NZXT, bring all those colorful dreams together. Test your own imagination. Links for parts in the description below. Now you may be wondering what's up with the name. Let's talk about the naming Woods first. See what I did there? All right. So the acronym stands for we owned the other team. There's also the wow loot and it's also an older slang word for saying like being victorious. And their logo matches the branding very well of being the crown of following that victorious theme. Feature wise, I would say this is like the perfect gaming keyboard with a TKA layout with media functions on the side. It's a super simple design with good angle adjustment and uh, there's rubber feet in the bottom so the keyboard is not going anywhere with a very sturdy build and reinforced interior, which uh, gives me pretty much no flex, but the keyboard is surprisingly light and the top plate is swappable for that extra character. We have a removable USB cable and appropriate channels for routing, although the cable is braided and not in a nice way that causes almost permanent kinks. The key front is beautiful with RGB illumination per key that shines only through the keycaps and not much uh, is reflected off that matte surface. And I don't like the texture of the keycaps because they stain too easily, but there are plans to replace them with double shot ABS or PBT keycaps instead. And I really hope this happens soon because this is an expensive keyboard and it's priced this way because of the switches. So aside from having that analog mode, that means your actuations become pressure sensitive depending on how far down you press. They are also swappable with this really good puller tool included. Uh, and so you either have this fully linear red flare tech switches or the clicky blue flare tech switches and you can also mix them up on the board for your liking. And they do have that MX stem for keycap replacement. I love the feeling of the red variant. They're super smooth with excellent rebounds and require only 55 grams of force for actuation. Although for me, they feel a little bit lighter than 55 grams for some reason. I would say they're more similar to like MX speed switches versus MX reds on how they feel. While the blue switches have that distinct click point at 1.8 millimeters and they feel significantly lighter versus the MX blues and to me that's a good thing. And because these are infrared switches, you can actually set the actuation point on where the key is registered. So from anywhere from 1.5 millimeters to 3.6 millimeters with four millimeters of total travel distance. And this is really cool because if you like to bottom out while typing, increase that actuation distance to 3.6 or maximum, uh, or if you want to be very speedy, put that to 1.5 and uh, in my experience, both actuation distances, they deliver very different, so almost having two keyboards uh, at one spot, but uh, you know, it's all software based because of that infrared switch. Now the blue flare tech switch has a unique property in that the actual clickiness happens at 1.8 millimeters, but the actuation point could be set to 1.5, so you could theoretically activate the switch without uh, activating the click first. 
So the analog mode, it's clearly why this keyboard is so special. So it's recognized both as a keyboard, as a joystick and as a controller. So I was very excited about trying out this new technique from motion. So not just full on speed running, but having that uh, almost precise control and how fast you move based on how far down you press on the key. Now, the problem for me is really the finger memory and how much you have to press in order to achieve a certain speed. And you know, don't wanna be fully bottoming out, but having that a lot more control and into Interacting with a keyboard is just totally a different experience now when uh, this pressure sensitivity is at play. And the analog range is actually quite short at only two millimeters. So you have to really train your fingers on how far you have to press in order to achieve a certain speed because otherwise your mind is almost concentrating on how far down you have to press instead of being sort of engaged in the game. And we as gamers are already so accustomed to fully bottoming out that having to almost re a little bit better that having to almost relearn uh, how to play on the keyboard is just Plus the majority of games already have the walk key bindings anyway. So I don't see the value of trying to figure out slightly different motion based on how much you press in between walk and run. And uh, it's actually very difficult to master. So it kind of counteracts the positives of being able to move differently. For FPS games, I would say it's completely pointless, even especially if you're trying to stray from a corner and trying to see if there's anything happening. It's uh, more effective for you to strafe normally back and forth in order to visualize something that's there instead of trying to slowly creep out from within that corner in order to see your enemy. In Battlefield 1, for example, walking is not built into the game. So perhaps the developers didn't want the pace to change. But now with this keyboard, you are adding this different level of mechanic to your, to your pace but uh, it doesn't fit the game. And there are many, many other titles like it where simply walking slower doesn't make any difference because the game is not really designed for that. For driving games, it's a totally different story where you have a lot more control about how fast you brake, how fast you accelerate, and how fast you turn. So it's not simply just turning this way, you have a lot smoother sort of motions. And uh, in that sense, the wooden one and the analog switch really helps. And to switch between digital and analog modes, we have a mode button along with a function and arrow keys to choose between those three analog profiles. So I just discovered the downfall of this being a three in one, a keyboard, a joystick and a controller. So right now I'm in the analog mode, but the computer is still detecting all the keyboard inputs. And that's, you know, that's fine. That's how it should be in case you want to do some chat stuff and whatever, and like interact with the rest of the keys, that's fine. But as soon as I hit one of the keys that are mapped to the controller, look what happens a second player showed up. So the system is thinking that there's a second player with a controller and another player with a keyboard. All right, so interestingly, this bug with Rocket League of it detecting the keyboard and the controller at the same time is just a bug in Rocket League. All you have to do is either restart the game or restart the computer or replug the keyboard. So everything's back to normal now. And uh, I can use my WASP keys and they'll be registered, I'll be, sorry, recognized as analog inputs uh, instead of uh, digital. And I remapped digital to something else completely on the keyboard uh, so that uh, they are not used when I play the game. And so now I have very fine control in how I um, maneuver my, my car inside the game. So I can either have very precise acceleration or deceleration, and uh, but most importantly, the little turns and just the smoother rotation of my car will help in game for sure. And so for pretty much any game that uses WASD, you have to remap it to something else that is not your WASD keys, so that you can use these WASD keys for your analog inputs instead. But you know, this analog mode, it's not entirely pointless if you get good, but I've been trying it out in FPS and it doesn't really fit my style. Plus the amount of customization that's available in the utility and game settings as well may be a big deterrent if you don't have the patience for trial and error and to like see which settings fit you best. And while not really abundant, it's really cool how you can load particular game profiles that the community members create. And uh, in Wooding also created Trello that you can follow the steps in terms of the uh, 
development of the software and you can even give them suggestions and see if they take those suggestions moving forward. Now, currently you cannot name the profiles and you cannot add any more, but they are working on expanding that to infinity and also obviously renaming the profiles uh, on the analog side so that you know exactly what you're getting to. And their approach to macro customization is kind of next level. So they're using that analog range to create two functions per key. So depending on how far down you press, uh, that particular function will be registered. The new Corsair Void Pro gaming headset is comfortable, stylish in different colors, delivers fantastic wireless performance even for competitive gaming with an all new microphone for clear communications. Check out the Void Pro Wireless or Wired in the description below. And so that's my experience with the Wooding One. It's definitely been an interesting way to experience sort of new way of interacting with a keyboard, something that I haven't really felt in the past. And to bring back that initial point I mentioned about this being not a finished product. So if you would like to be part of the development process, then maybe perhaps, you know, look into this. If you're a keyboard enthusiast and want to experiment with the analog situational stuff in games, it might be cool. Might be cool. Of course, it's a really expensive product as well, especially of being still sort of in development process. So you decide if it's worth it to you and let me know if it is in the comments below. And so thank you so much for watching. Make sure to check out these other relevant videos here and we'll see you in the next one.